Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. I am your gracious host, Xavier Miller, and today I got a live, super dope episode for y'all. But before we get started, I would like to advise all the listeners, all the watchers, to please like, subscribe, leave that five-star rating and review. We're trying to run those numbers up, as y'all know. So if y'all could do that, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And getting right to the show, man. I got a uh, guest. We was just chopping it up before we started. That he's going crazy in, 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 so, many, in so many endeavors. So we, we got a lot to chop up, a lot to talk about. And his name is Mike the Businessman. Yes, Welcome to the show, brother. I'm My excited man. to have you. Appreciate man. you. Thanks for having me up in here. <laughs> yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. So let, let's let's get right to it, man. So like people like people just hear Mike the Businessman. Let the people know what you do. We gonna we gonna go from there. 100, percent man. So yeah, my name is Mike the Businessman, and the reason why they call me that is because I've dabbled in a lot of businesses. Uh, right now, I own a brick and mortar exotic car rental company here in the Dallas area mm-hmm. called MTB Exotics. Uh, I also have an academy attached to that where I teach people across the world how to get started in the car rental business. Mm-hmm. Um, I also own a turf equipment company where I sell greens mowers um, to golf courses, colleges, and residential users. Mm-hmm. I also own a SaaS company. So there's a few things that I do at the moment. Yeah, okay. uh, and, for, and from my understanding, you know, most people, when they hear car rentals, they immediately think of uh Turo, they think yeah. of uh, what, six and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. From yeah. my, but you don't use any of those things. Nah, bro. Funny enough, I think that was kind of like my claim to fame, so to speak, bro. I was kind of like the John the Baptist screaming against that <laughs> stuff, right? Because I seen a lot of people doing the, using those apps. And I'm not saying I'm not knocking those apps, right? For right. some people, I call it the training wheels phase. Maybe you need to go through that. But if you really want to make the, the most money a big bag, you need to go private. And that's where you rent directly to customer. Mm-hmm. All right. So the advantages of that is not only do we charge more, we also get to build up our own book of business. Right. So that's another mm. thing. Right. Because on these apps, you're not getting the customer's data. You're not getting their phone numbers, emails and all of that stuff. But when you rent privately, you get that information. That's how you build a book right. of business, you know, so you can remarket to these people in the future. So that, yo, that's so important because like, but with, with that being said, how, how, when you when you're not using those platforms, I know one of the first things people are gonna think about, like, so but how is he marketing? Yeah. So do you, you mind breaking that down? Yeah, 100 percent So at the end of the day, you gotta think about it though. If you had any other business, how would you market it? Right. So mm-hmm. it's the same traditional forms of marketing, right? So you go do things like SEO, right? Search engine optimization to mm-hmm. make sure that when people go to Google and type in, hey, rental car near Dallas, me, yeah. your company comes up, right? Basic stuff like that. We run ads, you know, run a Facebook ad or Google PPC ad, right? Those things work. Or just organic marketing. It's several platforms out there you can list your cars and for free and you get renters so at the end of the day it's just doing the same things you do with any other business also applies here and it works how much does um those other platforms like turbo how much do they take because i know that's yeah. got to be a big reason as well there you go so i don't know about you but i like holding on to my coins Facts. i don't like sharing my coins with nobody so Facts. these platforms take up to 40 percent 40 percent. yeah there's one called get around they'll take 40 percent of your bread so it's like what the heck and then Unfortunately for these platforms, or well, unfortunately for the hosts on these platforms, um, the the whole concept or idea behind these platforms, they're for profit. They're trying to they're right. I, they they are more renter focused than host focus. All right, their idea they want to make the renters happy, so they pressure the host to keep dropping their prices. All right, you see, you have people trapping out their cars, trapping out Lambos for four hundred dollars a day no, on these platforms, so it brings more renters to the platform, so they win. They're collecting their forty percent, twenty, thirty, forty percent, but then the host Host is losing because guess what? On the back end, depreciation is going to eat up all that money, anyways. All right, so that's why I, I don't really like those platforms. Mm. You know, I rent my Lambo out for seventeen hundred a day, and people yeah, trapping them out on these platforms for three, four hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. But how are you like? Um, because I know probably one of the pros of using the platform is they're doing all the due diligence as far as like checking to see their 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 driver's history, their yeah. insurance. Like, how does that work when you do it when you're doing this independently? Yeah, are they really though? Like you've heard it. Go to any Facebook group, right? The two row Facebook groups. There's horror stories <laughs> of people renting these cars on there and the car ends up halfway across the country in Mexico. No That's a fact. You're <laughs> so right. So clearly they doing something wrong. Like, you're right. You're nah, right. man, I take matters into my own hands. We do all of that stuff, bro. So the kind of back up, right? So my background, um, after I graduated college in New Jersey, uh, Rutgers University, I couldn't get a job out there. And so some buddies of mine were out here in Dallas, Texas, doing auto insurance, right? Selling auto insurance. And so they put me on. They had me fly out. I moved. I moved out to Dallas. That's how I ended up here. And they got me a job in an insurance company. Shout out to my boy, Easy and Desmond, y'all. Uh, and that's how I started out here. I started working for a company called Eastwood selling auto insurance. So I understood the auto ins- insurance game. 
it, in and out. A few years later, I opened up my own auto insurance agency in the DFW area. I had three locations in the Metroplex. One is still open off of Cap, Camp Wisdom. My brother runs it now. Um, okay. And so that gave me insurance experience. And then fast forward several years later, I got into corporate America, okay. right? And I was doing risk management. I was a vice president at JP Morgan Chase, a tech and cyber good, operational good, risk good, management. Yeah. So I'm all about risk. How do I mitigate, avoid, or transfer my risk, right? What controls do I put in place to make sure when I hand over the keys to my Lambo, to a complete stranger, you walk into the door before I give you those keys, I need to make sure you're going to bring that car back. All right. So we yeah. put things in place. We're running background checks, driver's licenses, all kinds of verifying your driver's license to make sure it's real, all kinds of stuff like that verifying your insurance before we hand over the keys that's how i'm able to succeed in the private rental space without worry without worry that's big man because i've seen uh shout out to my boy marlon i've seen him he do uh tour road he, he yeah. shared a story about how he gave somebody a um, suv and they took the suv yeah. put it on craigslist oh. and sold it so <laughs> then he went to the people's house like because he had a tracker on there yeah. he went to the house he like yeah my car is here and she's like what she's like i just bought this car yesterday Damn. and he like yeah. well i'm sorry we got to take that back so it was like how does stuff like that even yeah how, that, that's crazy how that stuff has that has something like that ever happened with you? That's never happened to me, but I've heard the horror stories of people, especially people on these platforms yeah. falling victim for that. And even just people buying cars at Carvana and next thing they know, they get pulled over by the cops and they tell them the car was stolen. With Carvana? Yeah, people buying cars. That's all over the internet. Yeah. So um, it's also, that also just comes to like doing your, your background checks and investigating before you make these purchases. Yeah. Is, is that a reason why you, like uh, we spoke earlier and you said you, you focus on the Gucci client? Like oh, yeah, the high-end yeah, yeah, client. Yeah, yeah. Is that a reason? Uh, not necessarily, though. I mean, it can still happen then. I mean, there's okay. still people coming in. Once again, that's where your, your risk management comes into play, right? Like, you'd have people, especially... I ain't knocking people from Houston or whatever, though, but we see a lot, a of, lot, high risk, a lot of high risk people coming out of Houston to Dallas and rent cars. No fact. And it's always a red flag for my team because guess what? In Houston, they're right close to the ports. Once they get your car, bro, they'll take out the rip out the trackers and your car's in a container headed to Africa. Right. Matter of fact, in Dallas here, apparently some cat got his McLaren stolen a week ago and that thing's gone. <laughs> it's gone. So you got to be careful. A lot of people ride out there. They ride dirty and they don't put the right measures in place to protect their vehicles. And that's how they end up in those situations. Mm. Let's take it back for a second, because yeah. you, like you just said, you did risk management for 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 a big company. Yeah. So how long did you do that and what like propelled you to leave yeah. and do this? Gotcha. Good question, man. So uh, funny enough, man, when I um. I moved to Nigeria a while ago, back in 2007. I okay. had a contract with the Nigerian police out there. Really? I was building cell phone towers for them. Yeah, so this that was when I made my first million out in Nigeria. Funny enough, I bought my really? first Ferrari Range Rover. I was doing that for years. You was in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Actually, my dad's <laughs> Nigerian. Okay, so I okay. moved out there for that contract. And then... um. What I we decided to move back. Because How old are you at the time? At the time, I was uh, I was twenty seven years old. Okay, I was twenty seven years old. So I moved I moved out there. We were there for almost six seven years, um, and were very successful doing that. But then the Nigerian government's a little corrupt and all of that, so they kind of stole the contract away from me. Right, and this is a contract that was paying me every year recurring revenue, right, millions of dollars, right, and they stole that from me. So that's when I was like, you know what, let's come back to America. And it's like, all right, what do I do? Well, I got this degree, computer information systems. So I dusted off my degree, put my suit on and went back to corporate for a while till like I was able to regroup. Um, but then initially, while I was still doing corporate America, like I always had this desire inside of me to just get back to doing doing something. I had to find something to do. And so that's kind of like where, you know, I was in corporate America for about four years. I almost died, bro, in corporate America. What do you mean? I, I literally I had a DVT blood clot. I landed me in the ER, bro. And that was the wake up call for me. And I from think what? I think I think for me. I think it was almost meant, it was psychological. Just my, I wasn't, my spirit wasn't happy doing that, doing corporate. I just wasn't. I felt like I wasn't doing my God given purpose in life. You know, so I was never happy. I did it to please the wife. I, she wanted to picket fence and all of that stuff. We bought the house. We did that. We're living the American dream, but I wasn't happy inside. I felt like I wasn't walking in my purpose. And so I did that for several years. I started getting sick. I was constantly getting sick. I couldn't, my wife couldn't find, we couldn't tell why. Um, and that was the culmination of it. Like me getting sick, almost dying. And then I was up for a promotion, right? I bust my behind for several years for this big bank. I was up for a promotion and I got the title. They gave me the VP title, okay. but they only gave me a $2,000 raise. When I got that $2,000 raise, what? that's when I knew, okay, it's time to, it's time to leave. And so that's when I started to make my exit plan. Um, 
at the time, then COVID started to hit. Oh, COVID was about to hit just right before COVID. Um, a lot of people were starting to work remote. Yep. I got three remote jobs at the same time. <laughs> I was working three, three jobs at the same time. <laughs> I had what they call a mouse jiggler. So my mouse is jiggling. So they think I'm online. <laughs> so I had three laptops working three different companies and I'm just stacking up my bread. Mm. I'm saving up my bread. And that's so I did that. That was my exit plan. I did that for a few months, saved up the bread, started a car rental business. Mm. The rest was history. So, yo, that, that yo, we got a lot to cover. Yeah, 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 so, when you, so when you got into the business, um, did you get into the business with this business model when you started? Um, with, well, with not using those apps and stuff like that? No. So when I first started, a lot of my buddies were doing Turo. Okay. I knew my buddies were doing Turo. And I saw the holes in their game. A lot of them, they'll do it for a while. They're doing well. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I had this accident happened. This derailed me or somebody stole the car or somebody messed up this car. So I, I saw the holes in their game. And because of my risk management background, because I had that insurance background, it was just clear to me. Like I knew how to avoid and maneuver around those things. So mm. I, that's when I jumped in. I started off with Turo and I did that for barely, bro. I did that barely three months. And I, this is trash. You didn't and I like can't, it. Yeah. I, it was, I was slaving. It was minimum wage activities, bro. Like I'm like, nah, this ain't for me, man. I can't be doing that. So that's when I started to do the private rentals, um, started getting, st things started going really well. I got staff. So I was able to remove myself from the business, start working on it. And then the rest was history. So break, break it down. Like, right. So when you go get a vehicle, just to rent it out, like, is the buying process the same as, let's say, if I want to go buy a car today that I want to drive every day? Yeah. Or is it, is it a completely different buying process? It's almost the same buying process, except you just need to have um, your exit plan in mind, right? So when we go to go buy these cars, right? And then we also need to buy what your avatar wants, your target audience wants, not what you want anymore. It's not about what the cars Xavier likes. It's what your target customer would like. OK, let's say you want that, you want that, you know, hot yellow, you know, car or whatever. Right. Um, your customer might not like that, right? So go buy what they want. How do you figure that out, though? Yeah, just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's just defining your, your customer persona. Like, I even have a name for my avatar, what they like, the kind of cars they want to drive, and what colors, right? Once you have that image vividly in your mind, go buy those vehicles. And then here's another hack, right? Let's say you want to go buy an Escalade. You want to run out of Escalade, right? I tell people to go buy the earliest year of the newest body style. So let's say the Escalade, they changed the body style in 2021. Right. Don't go wasting your money buying a 2024 because you're going to eat that depreciation, right? The second you drive off the lot, go buy the 2021. It's already had a 35% drop in the price. And then you guess what? You're going to rent that 2021 for the same exact amount of money as a person that's got the 2024 version. So then you save money. So that way you don't eat the depreciation. You can rent that mug up for several years and exit without running at a loss. So mm. it's just being a little bit more strategic way, when you way, get in. Way more strategic. Yeah, 100%. that's a lot. That's a lot more. Strategic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we put the yeah. We have to think about that before you jump in. So how how many vehicles do you have now? In my fleet now, as of yesterday, because we just got a white Huracan and a white four eighty eight Ferrari. We got eighteen now in the fleet. You got eighteen. Yeah, eighteen. Yo, yeah. Got the, the 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 Lambo and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the exotics, the high end stuff. Yeah. Is that what made you get a? Uh, is having eighteen made you get a warehouse? Um. Yeah. So well, actually, I got the warehouse from the start, bro. Oh, you just, always had yeah, the warehouse. Yeah. When I started, barely two months in, I got a warehouse just because. Because I knew I wanted to scale this um, in business, bro. Like you just have to have a definiteness of purpose. Know what direction you're going. Set goals. Set smart goals. Like I knew from the start, like this was something I wanted to see to the end. I wanted to scale it, right? So this wasn't no side hobby for me. So a warehouse wasn't an option. I knew eventually I had to get a warehouse. That way, that's how you start to attract higher end customers. Because there's certain people, like people that are having weddings or yeah. proms, they won't trust some broker joker on the side of the street that tells you to meet them at a gas station. Right. Because they don't want you to disappoint them on that big day. They'll trust an establishment, though, when they can walk into your warehouse and see the car and that builds more trust. So, yeah, that's when I, I decided to go get the warehouse and start doing is, that. Is those like the most uh, booming seasons, proms? Oh, yeah. Summertime summer? is crazy. Dude. Like summer. right now, this is when we make our bag. Really? From now till November. Yeah, it's up. And how how are you like um, when you have the warehouse, how are you running it? Is it does it take a full staff and team to get to get to the ball rolling and all that. Funny enough, no, it doesn't. And, and guys, don't miss, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me though. You don't need a warehouse to be in this business. Right, right. No, you hundred percent don't. No, it just depends on what level of scale you want to take it to. Um, there's several ways around that. There's uh, several fleet parking options that are cheap, two hundred dollars a month. You could park a fleet of cars. So there's several options. Just to preface with that. But as far as getting a warehouse, no. When I started, I just it was initially just me. And then after a while, as I started to scale, I got one one or two people to help clean the cars and go do deliveries and stuff like that. Now I have a manager that runs it and I have one or two staff to help with deliveries and cleaning cars. 
How much when you started? How much money did you have? Did you have? Just, I mean, I'm asking mm-hmm. because I know people have the idea. Like, is that how much I'm gonna need to start this business yeah. as well? No, nah, that's a beautiful thing. I always tell people that you can. This is one of the only businesses that you can truly get started with no cars, no cash, no credit. All right. So if that applies to you, yeah, facts. <laughs> if that applies to you, you can start off as what they call a broker. All right. There's several brokers mm. in this city. It's kind of like an Airbnb where right. you're doing co-hosting. Right, right. Right. You help other people manage their fleet in exchange for a, per- a percentage. Right. They could pay you 20 or 30 percent of your profits up to 40 percent for you just running their cars for them. Mm-hmm. So if you have a family member that has a car or somebody working remote, they don't use their car. Go put that car to work. Right. Or you could leverage. You could JV with someone, joint venture with somebody. Maybe they have good credit. You don't have good credit. Go partner with them. They buy the cars. You run it. You split profits. So that's a way you can get into this business. You don't have to have a lot of money. Um, and there's different niches. I just focus on exotics. Most of my mentees do economy cars. Really? Or luxury cars. And those are cheap. You could buy those. I tell people to buy cars between $3,000 and $10,000. I don't want you buying a twenty, thirty thousand dollars Camry to get into this business. Because the person with the $4,000 car is going to make the same amount of money as a person with a $20,000 Camry. Right? So you could you can get a business credit card for like fifteen, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Go buy you a bunch of economy cars and get busy tomorrow. I've heard I've heard of people um using like age limits, especially when it comes to exotics. They're yeah. like you got to be twenty five to drive yeah. a Lambo just yeah. because we don't want you to be young and reckless. Yeah. Is that something that you do as well? I practice that too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for us, uh, our policy is twenty one and above. But if you want to get into a Lambo, um, if you're twenty one, we surcharge you, and you better have some good insurance, and you better be squeaky clean. Otherwise, we're not doing it. The best insurance, huh? Yeah, you got to cover probably yeah, the, yeah, the entire yeah, vehicle. We're not messing with you if you if you janky. Nah, nah. Just because a lot of these younger guys, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just. As those are to be the people that are branch or Lambo, and then you'd go to their social media page, and then you see them standing on top of the car. Stand on top of the car. For some reason, I don't know why people feel like they always need to stand on top of these exotics. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? They scratch up your car. Like, what the freak? You know, that's a ten thousand dollar paint job you just messed up. So yeah, for some reason, especially in our community, the black communities, they always yeah, like to do that shit. Like, I don't understand it. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's, that's, I've seen it. I've seen that up close before. People yeah, renting cars yeah. and hanging out the car or driving with one door open. Yeah. All that type of, yeah, yeah. 100%, yeah, bro. Yeah, you're right. like, yo, we used to even do video shoots in the warehouse. And then the last time we ever did that, bro, was a bunch of kids rented out the warehouse to do a video shoot. And then they were stupid enough to go post a video online. And I saw it where there's literally, one of them was sitting on top of the side mirror of a Lambo. Of a $300,000 car sitting on the side mirror and it broke and they tried to deny it. But then we saw, we saw the video online. So it was just stupid things like that. So we just stopped doing that. We don't rent to people. Yeah. If you're too young, we're not rocking. With you. It's not worth it. Yo, that's what would you say is the, um, the, the, the biggest, the biggest pros of running this kind of business? Oh yeah. Very good question, man. See right now, especially like right now, like is that shiny object syndrome, right? There's all of these new businesses popping up, like uh, e-commerce and stuff, Amazon dropshipping, Walmart yep. automation stores. A lot of these things is always a new way of doing it, right? The problem with those plays is that they burn out quickly. Very. <laughs> you know quick. what I'm saying? I know so many people <laughs> have gone bankrupt. You know, have jumped into these businesses or opportunities, and you know they missed the boat. You know, reason why I like car rentals is because it's tried and true. It's based on basic principles of economics, demand and supply. You know what I'm saying? They've been renting our cars since forever. Yeah. And they still doing this. Hertz, Avis, all of them still making a bag. So it's not, it's not this new thing. It's just based on foundational, uh, foundational principles of economics, right? So if you buy the right car, that's why I keep stressing. You buy the right cars, like perfect example. Let's say you want to target gig economy workers, Uber drivers, DoorDash drivers. Next time you order Uber Eats, look at the kind of car they're driving. It's going to be a fuel efficient car. Go buy that and then go market to them. You would never be without clientele. You would have a wait list of people waiting to take your cars. All right. There's no tactics. There's no plays. None of that stuff. It just works. That's why I love it. Mm, that, you know, you, that's, that's real because every, I, I'm not, I'm thinking about it. Every time I've or, ordered Uber Eats yeah. or something like that, it has been like nine times out of the team is like the same type of car every single go. time. And guess what? Here's the bar. I bet you 90% of the time. It's a small rental company that gave them that vehicle. Really? Yep. And See, I never even them, thought of that. And we charge them weekly. We charge them weekly. You could go buy, guys, you could go buy a $4,000 Ford Fusion. All right. Reason why we like Ford Fusions is because you could replace the engine if it blows or if it has too many miles for like three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Cheap. Get them on Facebook Marketplace, get a new engine in there. All right. So that's why we love those. You could buy it for five, four or five thousand dollars and you could put the, give that car to a gig economy worker, charge them four, three to four hundred dollars a week, depending on where you live. I have mentees charging up to five hundred a week and they will pay. You know why? Because they use those cars for their work to earn money. money. You know what I'm saying? So they're incentivized to take care of that car and keep paying you. 
right? So imagine that you bought that car for four or $5,000. It's making you almost 2000 a month. It's paid off in two, three months. Now you're playing with house money. Yo, that's, what, what's, what's your number one rent, most rented car? For me? So like I said, I'm doing exotics. exotics. For me, the Lamborghini Huracan by far. Uh, by far. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that is? I just think for us, it's, uh, I don't know, people just like the Lambos. When kids, it's an aspirational view. Yeah, it is. Kids grew up with posters of Lamborghinis on their walls. And um, I always tell people that when they get into this space, like once again, know your avatar, only buy what they want. People buy these weird cars nobody's ever heard of. And then they wonder why they can't rent them out. Nobody's aspiring to drive that vehicle. Is that one of the main reasons why some people fail in this business? hundred percent. They go buy what they want. I seen a lady go buy a, a red Escalade. Who's going to rent a red Escalade? People want to Escalade in black on black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> stick, stick to stick to the script. That's it. What's what's other reasons that people don't don't uh, profit from this industry? Risk management, hundred percent. True story. Just yesterday, I had a call with a mentee. He used to be in my mentorship program. He graduated last year, and when he graduated, he was making thirty thousand dollars a month off of his economy cards. He had almost sixteen of them, right? Making passive income off of it. He admitted to me yesterday that Michael, I just I was making more money than I ever made in my life. And I just stopped. I let go of risk management. The money was too good. I got too thirsty for the money. And that's where I see a lot of people failing. Like they, you stop doing those things that you were doing initially. You stop verifying people before you hand over your keys and you just trust them and handle you. You stop putting trackers in the cars and then things start to happen. That's the number one way that people get wrecked in this business. hundred percent risk management. Mm. And that's that's so that's so key because like with you because you started you say you started twenty seventeen I started well the car rental business twenty nineteen twenty nineteen how how old were you at the time twenty nineteen I was thirty nine so you was so I would say you was probably very mature very experienced yeah and probably business. not and and business minded and not really fascinated by let me just get the quick bag no. and there's probably so many people that come into the industry is probably in early twenties that just still haven't had that much experience so they kind of can get distracted by whatever's gonna make me the most money the quickest type of thing. You got to think about it, bro. Like I I know I know somebody that's got almost a hundred economy cars. He's cash flowing now almost two hundred thousand a month. That's life changing money. He's life in his twenties. He's in his twenties. It's life changing money. Some people don't know how to act when they get that kind of money. Right. So um, I do think at the end of the day, too, um, another reason why people fail, too, I was going to bring this up is, is just people don't want to embrace the journey of business, any business whatsoever. That's a bar. Because on Instagram, you're seeing instant success. You're seeing these people that claim that they made a, a million, million overnight yep. and they think that's the norm. Nobody wants to go through the bumps and bruises, the journey. Right. They don't want to. They don't have that stick to itiveness, so to speak. Right. Um, and unfortunately, I see that's what wrecks a lot of people in our community. Um, and. They they hit one rough season, once one cold winter, and, it's and out. they're out. They out. They out. They out of there. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it a million and, times. Yeah, and I think if you if they just waited just a little longer, one or two extra months, just get make it past understanding that there's cycles in business. You know, things will turn around. You just got to make it through it. But but what gave you the the let me say like the willpower, the mindset, mm -hmm. and the courage to look like you like you left corporate. You got a family. Yeah, leaving in your thirties, mid to late thirties. Yeah. 99% of people, they're not going to do it strictly out of fear or out of their spouse saying, are you crazy? Yeah. We got a family to raise. Like, right. So what like, what made you like do that? Because yeah. you got to be kind of like, you can't be a normal thinking person to 100%. do something like that. For me, my biggest why has always been uh, twofold. It's, it's uh, the fact that I'm a dad, like you mentioned, my family, being able to provide, set a good example for my girls. The next big why for me has always been my mom. You know, my mom, my dad died. My mom, she's she's here in Grand Prairie um, and she's almost at retirement. She, well, she's almost 75 years old. Oh, I, want, yeah. I just last year started retiring my mom. Really? So that's been the motivation for me to be able to make sure that she doesn't have to worry about her bills. So that's also put that pressure on me, that time pressure, like time's ticking. Like I got to hurry up. You know, as they say, success loves speed. So like for me, I execute immediately. Second I get that information, I'm executing because I know I don't have much time. My mom could leave tomorrow. I got to become successful ASAP. So that's been something that's been motivating me and driving me and pushing me 100%. So you, so in your opinion, you would say pressure, putting that pressure on yourself is a good thing for oh, yeah. people that's listening and watching. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Grant Cardone also talks about it too, right? Like Grant Cardone talks about always being at zero because that's going to make you, that lights that break fire that underneath you. Huh? I said break that down. Yeah. So like he says, like he likes his bank account. Like you shouldn't have just cash sitting in your bank account because then you get too complacent. You do. Right. You get complacent. Right. So Facts. always like get that money, go invest it, go throw it into something else. Facts. So that way your bank account's always at zero. That like keeps that fire lit underneath you. 
some a lot of people don't see it. Floyd Mayweather used to say it's hard to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning for your run when you're waking up on, on Versace, well, Versace uh, sheets. sheets. That's a fact. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? When you get comfy, you're not gonna do that run. Yo. That road work. So yeah, you gotta make sure that you're always uncomfortable Yo. and thrive in that. I believe in that, and I spoke on this before. I believe in that model wholeheartedly, yeah. especially as a man. Like I, I, I joke about it sometimes. I'm like, I got some days where I'll just like go to another room and just sleep on the floor. Yeah, there you go. Because it's, <laughs> it's like you know when when you live with a woman. Yeah, a woman loves love comf comfort. Hundred percent. And as a man, ain't nothing wrong with it. you comfort. Everything in the crib is nice. Yeah. Plus pillows. Yep. Fat bank account. It's easy to for your brain to go. Oh, I'm good. Hundred percent. Yep. But until you be like, you, you put yourself in, like you said, uncomfortable environments, whatever that may be for you, yeah. then you, 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 it makes you still strive for more. Because I, I've been there, man, when you think like, you think you better, you think you're doing better than what you're actually doing. 100%. <laughs> and here's another aspect to that too, right? Changing your environment. Who are you hanging out around? <laughs> yep. right? You think you're a big dog in a small <laughs> yard till you go. That's why I like going to ATL. <laughs> when I go to ATL, I get humbled. <laughs> and I'm in a room with people say, oh, what? You made what? You made one, two million last year? Oh, yeah, I made that in a day. Yeah. They're like, oh, shoot, there's levels. <laughs> so yeah. when you hang around that, that's what makes you uncomfortable. That's what keeps you growing. And even me and a couple of my guys, like shout out to my boy Josh and Carrot, and we started like a group, Dallas Got Next. And all we do is just sharpen each other. We got that hunger in each other and, and we just network all the time and we're trying to just keep pushing each other to the next level. Because that keeping the hunger is so is so important because yeah, it's so easy yep. for it to, the more success you get, the more money you make, it's so easy for it to start doing dwindling. So keeping it and 100%. figuring out ways to keep it, it's extremely like, yo, that's one of, I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't talk about because we, we always talk about like obtaining success, yeah. obtaining the money, yeah. but a lot of people don't talk about, okay, after you got those things, now what? Now what? How yep. do you keep that same mentality and that same edge you had to get that? I'll tell you what, though. I, was re I read a lot of Napoleon Hill. Okay. Man, and I've been reading him a lot, a lot of his books. And um, he talks about there's a bo this book called Outwitting the Devil. I like I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I love yeah, that's yeah, one of my yeah. best books, bro. And, mm -hmm. and then he talks about the devil talks about the two major things, reasons why people fail or succeed in life. And he says it's because they don't have definiteness of purpose. So establishing goals and just staying laser focused on them. Right. Not wavering a lot. And then the second reason to that is he talks about um, he talks. How does he call he calls it um, drifting. So drifting is when you you start to lose your way. Yeah. Maybe maybe you're making that money and you start partying every week and you're yeah. buying out the club yeah. every weekend. Right. You start you, you're, you're married. You start sleeping all over the place. You start doing drugs and and picking up bad habits. Right. Yep. You you messing up the hip, your, 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 your hypnotic rhythms, your, your habits change. That's what typically throws people off. That's where you you leave the path and then you fall into ruin. And, and so I've, I've, I've tried to live my life. I mean, well, nobody's perfect, but I think if you follow those two principles, you can't lose. If, if you're locked in your laser focus on your, your purpose, you have a goal, what you're trying to achieve in the next year, set short-term goals, medium-term goals, long-term goals, right? Once you have that, you're locked in. Then the next thing also is Take an audit of your life. Take an inventory of life. What are you wasting your money on? What bad habits do you have? Are you an alcoholic? Are you smoking too much? Are you smoke weed first thing in the morning, or first thing at night, like constantly all day long. Is that derailing you? Just take inventory and then cut those things off. And I guarantee you, the universe will, will reward you 100%. But to, to do that, like you said, you have to be real with yourself. You do have you to have, take inventory. You have inventory. to look in the mirror 100%. and look at yourself and be completely Self honest. Self-assessment, yes, sir. Yeah, that's, that's important, man. That's, yes, sir. That's very important. So I know you also have a, um, you, you, what's it called? A, a mower? A turf equipment business. Yeah, so it's called <laughs> usedrillmowers.com. Okay. That's the website. I don't like talking about okay, okay. like my little side <laughs> baby. But um, and don't be hitting me up asking me to teach you guys how to do that. That's, nah, that's for me. But yeah, what it is is um, I used to be a green thumb. And when I was in corporate, I don't want nothing to do. After work, I just go mow my lawn. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people that win yard of the month, they got the beautiful stripes and all of that stuff. So um, I had to find, I tried to, I re did some research and found out the exact kind of mower that you needed to achieve that look, that golf course look. And I found out there's a special mower that lawn uh, golf courses use. All right. You can't use your regular mower to achieve that. And these mowers cost a lot of money. It's like $15,000 brand new. Yeah. Use it like three, 4,000. Right. So I bought one and a lot of my white friends were like, where did you get that? I had a hookup. So I literally, while I was doing corporate, these white boys would show up with pickup trucks in my house. <laughs> I'll take 10 minutes, run to the garage, go sell one, make an extra thousand or two on the side. And next thing I know, I'm having people hitting me up from all over the country wanting to buy these things. And that's how that company was born. All organic. I never ran ads, nothing. And now we are one of the number one turf equipment used real mower companies in the country. Yeah. And then it was just like taking candy from a baby because 
the competition is all like Probably old not. white men. Right. They don't even, they're not even on the internet. <laughs> and I was able to get the domain name, use realmowers.com, you know, ran some SEO, ran it up to the top of Google, and I just dominated. Yo, I want to salute you just because, like you just said, so many, like, and I, I'm trying to figure out the the, the right way to say this because I don't want to sound like I'm knocking people. Yeah. I feel like within our community, a lot of times, there's a lot of monkey see, monkey do. Mm, there's not a like, a, not a like uh, creativity, creativity when it comes to mm -hmm. finding new ways yeah. to make money. It's like, oh, yeah. they person doing that? I'm going to yeah. do that. They doing that? I'm going to do that. 100%. So to see somebody in this industry, I've never even heard of this. I didn't yeah. know this was a thing. That's why I don't I was, talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because yeah. if people would hear that, be like, oh, I'm gonna, let, me, yep. let me figure that out. That's, yep. that's, uh, that's, that's a big, big salute. Yep. Bro, I also started a SaaS company, a software as a service company in December. And the goal with that is to get it to at least 20,000 a monthly recurring revenue. And in the SaaS business, if you know anything about that, there's a 10x multiplier when you're trying to exit. So at least if I can get it to 20,000 a month, it's worth $2 million uh, valuation automatically off the rip. So I could sell that business and exit. So that's the plan with that. So hopefully by the year, I want to get it to that point and dip out. Yo, to do all these things, you obviously have to have a lot of wisdom, a lot of smarts. You can't be no dummy doing stuff like this. 100%. So how, to this day, how are you still educating yourself? Oh, yeah, we were just talking about yeah. this before the podcast, man. Bro, I read, I speed read like a mug. See, people waste, a lot of people try to use the excuse that they don't have time. Nah, you could watch a whole football game for three, four hours every Sunday or watch a, the playoffs game, Mavs game for three hours. I spend that time reading books. And for me, what I find um, is not even physical books, audio books. I have an audible subscription and I just found out Spotify started doing it. I went crazy. So I, I read at least two books a week on 2x speed. 2x speed. I'm driving. I'm, I'm reading a book. I'm in the shower. I got a Bluetooth speaker connected to my phone. I'm listening to it. I'm in the hot tub. I'm listening to it all day long, bro. And that's how I learn. That's the fastest way to just get that knowledge and then go out and go execute. For me, that's what I found. So investing in books uh, buying courses. I am a course junkie, bro. If really? there's something I want to learn, I want to learn how to SEO, do SEO, or Google ads, or this, that, and the other. I'm buying a course to go learn it. I'm seeking out mentorship, paying for it, and go do it. Because that helps me collapse time. At the end of the day, bro, time is the only thing I can't buy. I don't have a lot of it, so <laughs> I got to hurry up. I got to get to it. Mm. Yeah. And, you, and you, you're in your 40s now, so yep. these are probably these are probably your, your, your um, what's I'm trying to think of the word? The, your highest earning years Probably right. Hundred percent. Well, it, 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 I did. I did make my first million in my thirties. Um, the difference between the wealth I had in the, my thirties and now is when I when I got that in my thirties, um, the money would just come like I'd just get a check for like that much money, like a million dollars. Like it would just come lump sum and very minimal expenses. So it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Versus like now. I just started four businesses in the past four years, four or five years, right? So if any, if you know anything about entrepreneurship, like you've got to reinvest in the business. And I think our society, we're kind of spoiled. We think, or oh, we're thinking overnight success. Nobody wants to reinvest in their business. It needs to make profit the first week or it's a bust. <laughs> they don't want to get in it. Amazon was in the red for over five years <laughs> before they made their first profit. You know, Twitter is bleeding right. money when Elon Musk took, took over. He had them buying their own toilet roll to come to work. Right. So some people don't believe like, so for me, I had to keep re reinvesting, reinvesting in the business until now. And I got to give a shout out to my man, Mike Michalowicz. Have you heard, heard of this book called Profit First? Mm -mm. Profit First changed my life. If you haven't read Profit First, go get that book because that is what helped me go from, because as an entrepreneur, you're always wanting, you don't, you pay yourself last. Yep. You pay everybody else, credit card companies, every, and then you keep what's left. Um, with profit first, no, we get paid first. You know, you get, so it, it, they have you set up five accounts. You have an income account. That's where all your money comes into, right? And then you split it up according to these certain percentages. Uh, say 60% could go to your operating expenses account. That's where you pay all your bills out of, all right? 20% um, will go to your profit account. You keep that, never touch that except quarterly. At the end of every quarter, that's your reward for your hustle, all right? And go, he wants you to go blow it. Go take a trip to Greece, whatever. Go enjoy it. This is the fruits of your labor, all right? There's an owner's comp account. That's how you get paid on the 1st and the 15th. You run payroll out of that. A certain percentage goes there. And then IRS, Uncle Sam's got to get Uncle hit. Uncle Sam's got to get You there. put that. So if you follow profit first, I kid you not, bro, within two, three months of diligently following this, all of a sudden, that business that you thought was cash strapped, all of a sudden becomes profitable. You're cash flowing. That's been the biggest switch in the past year for me. It's been a game changer. Systemizing. My, my business. 
Yeah. That's 100%. basically systemizing everything. 100%. 100%. It, that, that's so important because it's hard to run a functioning business when it's not systemized. Stuff is, can kind of get all over the place pretty easily. Yep. yep. You start losing money, not knowing what this money went, how, like what happened to this money. So that's very, that's that's crucial. Also, it's discouraging because you could be making a hundred k a month, but by the time you pay everybody and everything, there's nothing. There's nothing for you, and you're wondering where did all the money go. But then when you have a system, no, I'm getting paid first. I'm getting my 20, 30 percent, and and guess what? You'll find out. Sometimes the banks can wait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes your creditors can wait a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And you got, hey, at the end of the day, if I'm not alive to pay you, how you gonna get your bread? <laughs> so that's the beauty of the, this, uh, this the, the profit first mindset. It's it's a game changer, bro. And funny thing is they have it for different industries. Profit first for consultants, for medical doctors, dentists. It's like a worldwide phenomenon. Really? Oh yeah. 100%. I've never heard of that. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely book, check man. it out. I'm gonna check it out. 100%. That, that's heavy, man. So like, what is a, at this point with so many businesses, what is like a day to day like for you? Man. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of my businesses run in Slack. Slack is like a communication app out right. there. So I have all my different businesses in Slack. So it's me bouncing around between different businesses. I have like operation managers over each one. So it's me checking in with them, right? I'm checking in with them to see where things are at. I'm checking in with the sales team. So for me, the biggest uh, branches of my business are always going to be sales and marketing, number one. I'm checking in with my sales manager and marketing team, all of that, and making sure pieces are together. Um, right now, I work on top of it now, but I still don't mind getting down and dirty. Because at the end of the day, um, in business, you need to know enough about every aspect of your business. You know, you might not, you might have other people running ads for you, but guess what? I went to go learn how to run, how to ads, run ads so nobody could cheat me. All right. You might not know how to build a sales funnel or a web page. I learned how to go do some of that stuff on a basic level so nobody could cheat me. So um, I, I just bring all of that to the table and I'm able to just, yeah, that's how I'm able to run everything and it runs efficiently. Do you believe in, um, like some people say, when you when you got a family, you got business, there's no such thing as, uh, what's the word? They're like, there's, there's no such thing as um, balance. Balance. Mm, yeah. What you think about that? Funny you mentioned that. I was watching <laughs> Myron Golden on this too a while ago, and he was talking about no. He says balance. There's no such thing as balance, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's um, the seasons, right? Um, is a there's a season where this is grind mode. This is getting all your this attention. This is this is and this is getting all my attention right mm -hmm. now. And then there's a season of play, and I ascribe to that also. Like for me, the past few years have been grind mode for me. You know, my dad always used to say like. Michael, stop going on vacation all the time. You can vacate when you die. <laughs> you you can rest all you want when you're dead. And, and it, even though it's kind of extreme, but it stuck with me. Basically, what he's saying is when you're young, hustle. Hustle. Get this money. Stop wasting. Stop. Once again, stop drifting. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when you make it, you can do all of that stuff. And I, no, you're right. I think being when you're young, you kind of think. You, first of all, you think your mortality is like, yep, you I here know. forever. forever. Like, this is never going, I'm always make this money forever. I'm always be able to do these things forever. And then it doesn't, it isn't until you start getting older, start going through things. You're like, oh, snap. Yep. Time is finite. Yep. I, yeah, I watched Charles Barkley talk about this like randomly. I was scrolling on Twitter and I watched the video. He was talking about, he always advises young mm -hmm. NBA players. He like, he see them with Dior on, with chains. He yep. said, he said it kills him because he knows the average NBA career is only four years. There you go. And he like, this money has to last you. For the a rest lifetime. of your life. <laughs> yep. So it's like you you don't have to. He was like, well, "Who are you trying to impress? Like, why are you spending all this money?" And I think when I watched it, I'm like, that doesn't even just go to athletes. That even goes to young business people because yeah. a lot of us we might have a period, a season mm -hmm. where we're going stupid crazy. Yep. Yep. And that's thing you know, our lifestyle is just to that. Yep. Without thinking like, hold on, this can end. <laughs> this can end. Yep. What's what's next? You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So I think all that is being strategic enough to think long term. All that stuff is extremely important. And just to piggyback off of what you said, right? With this success, a lot of these guys are having, especially these COVID millionaires, right? Yeah. Here's the problem with that: most of these guys, 99.9% .9 of them, were working at McDonald's or just Walmart before that. right before COVID hit. So these guys have never run businesses before a day in their life. Now, all of a sudden, online, they're multi-millionaires. It's short-lived. It's short-lived because the foundations are, the foundation isn't there. It's built on sand. They don't know the principles. And that's why I also, even though people knock corporate America, I still give it credit because it taught me a lot of structure. Yep. It taught me SOPs. It taught me about building, putting uh, in place uh, baselines and, and guidelines and processes and systems and structures and all of that. Having KPIs and leading and lagging indicators, things that... I wouldn't normally do. But my team, we have scrum meetings every day, um, twice a week. Tell me what you did yesterday, what you're doing today, what you're going to do tomorrow. You know, 15 minute stand up meetings, things like that you pick up from corporate America and you put into your business. And that's how you build businesses that last. 
I agree. That's why I kind of it kind of it's kind of cringy when I see people like down talking corporate America no, and stuff like I that. I don't ever do that because mm-hmm. I'm like a lot. There's so many entrepreneurs in the world. Period. That that was their starting point. Hundred percent. And they transition those skills from what they learned to that into doing their own thing. So 100%. I'm like people down. So I'm like that's just that's just silly to me. Only Personally. reason why I down talk uh, corporate America is because I gave it my I gave it. Everything oh, that's I different. Had. That's different. Yeah, that's different. that's different. You know what I'm saying? You did it though. I'm talking and about my boss, that yeah, it. she kind of, yeah, you know, she, she she cheated on me. She cheated on me, but gave me only two thousand dollars raise. That pissed me off. That's so crazy. That's different. Um, but I do not knock corporate America. I don't knock the experience I got from it. No, 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 no. Going back to that two thousand dollars raise thing, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. Did you feel like that was a slap in the face? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, because um, when I came into that bank, I was actually um, I was what they call a. Uh, uh, AVP, assistant vice president at a different bank. And so when I tra- went, the only reason why I moved to this new bank is because they promised me a VP title. But then all of a sudden, when I got the job, they're like, oh yeah, sorry, uh, corporate policy. We can't have an AVP go up to VP, um, you know, from a different bank. So they just kind of pulled the switcheroo on me last minute, but it was already too late. I gave my notice at the other place, so I didn't have an option. So I had, I made them commit to me. Okay, if I bust my behind for a year or two, would you guys give it to me? Yes, we will. And we'll give you, we'll bump you up to, the, the pay grade of a VP. Well, I bust my behind. I hit all my targets, all my goals. Um, and then they still only gave me a $2,000 raise. That's when I'm like, nah, at this pace, how do I retire my mom's? Making $2,000 every two, three years. Uh, yeah, that ain't working for me. Mm. That's when I left. Mm. Do you think we're in a recession? I think so, 100%. I do think um, uh, the cycles to business, and then we had a, we've had a boom you know, all that money that was the stimulus money that was injected <laughs> into the economy. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the cycles to business. You think you look back to early 19, the 1910 uh, depressions and 1930 depressions, they were all followed by booms, right? So it's just a boom bust cycle. So 100%, I do feel like we are going in a recession or about to be in one. And then, but it's nothing to panic about because we do know that there's still going to be a, a boom afterwards. Has it, do you, has it impacted your business? My business, funny enough, Last now, what impacted the car rental business was the chip shortage. Mm, I heard about that. Yeah, the chip shortage impact. Uh, Everyone that bought cars in 2022, 2023 overpaid. All right. There's no way out of that. Right. Overpaid. So what that does is now you're you have negative equity in the car. Yeah. All right. So a lot of people panic and then give up. A lot of people did. No, stick to it. Because with that, all you got to do is either pay it off so you could go trade it in somewhere or get a company to buy it off of you. And then you pay off the negative equity yourself or you could pay it down. So just keep renting that car to the ground until you pay it off. Eventually, you'll catch up and then you can get out of it. Right. Um, so there's there's ways around that. But I, I do. It, it, that's the way it impacted the car rental business. Yeah. And with you, you, you uh, 44, right? I'm 44. 40, now. 43 40, now. 43. Now. 43. Yeah. And so you've experienced the past recession, the 07. Mm-hmm. So for the young people, right, that's in business or in corporate, whatever they're doing, and they making money, they're killing it. Yeah. And then it's currently recession, going into a recession, whatever the case may be. What would be your biggest piece of advice mm-hmm. to, to those mm-hmm. with you already living through one? 100%. Yes. I would say, like, if you guys, you have a nine to five job, I would say keep your job and then use the income from your job. Go set up an LLC and start investing that money. Invest that money in, in, in dividend paying stocks, invest that money in real estate. But here's the thing. Learn not to panic. Don't panic when that recession comes. Don't freak out and exit your positions. Right. You think about what I read. Um, there's a book called The Almanac of um, Charlie Munger, mm-hmm. the, the co-founder of um, Warren, Buffett Berkshire, guy. Yeah, Warren Buffett's partner. Right. Mm-hmm. And he talks about his success. And he he says, bro, like, I wish I could tell you it was because I had the special genius. Or any of that. No. He just never panicked. He'll see something he likes, one company he likes, they buy into it and they freaking hold it forever. It doesn't matter if it crashes, goes down near to zero. They believe in that company, believe in the fundamentals and they stick to it. That's it. At the end of the day, that's what business is about. It's just sticking to it and then some luck and you'll be successful. Um, people just freak out every time they see a cycle and they dip out. Mm, just they no. hang on to it. And, that, that, and that's probably so difficult for people to do because when you see your money 100%. dwindling, if you watching your account going, yeah, most people gonna be like, "Yo, it's time to exit." We got, I gotta get this bag, man. Before it hits a zero, everybody get a little scared. So it's having your emotions in check when it comes to finances. That's Keith. something that yo. Look at Bitcoin, bro. <laughs> Look at Bitcoin. Twenty seventeen, it went up. I remember when it went up. It hit That's like what I what, a couple of thousands. Went up to twenty thousand. Yep. Everyone bought there thinking it was going to the moon, and yep. it crashed. It crashed. And people almost people are killing themselves, jumping out of skyscrapers, it. all of that, thinking it was over. If they just held, <laughs> like look where it's at now. Right. And then it keeps going up and down. It's yep. just cycles. 
But long term, guess what? The trajectory is up. That's all you have to know about it. But do you think that takes time? Because the, re the re and the reason I'm asking that is because I got in Bitcoin at 2017, yeah. in August 2017, right before it went crazy. Crash, yeah. So I seen it go. I, I had the emotions when it went yeah. super high. I'm I like, know. yo, I'm lit. Yeah. And then it crashed. I had the emotions was just feeling like shit. Yeah. So experiencing that, that taught me like, you know, nothing's like really more volatile than cryptocurrency. Hundred percent. So that taught me like, yo, now that it's going crazy. Kinda. Right. I'm like, I really don't care because I know it could go back down tomorrow. It doesn't affect yep. me at all. But it took me to a while to an experience in that to get to be able to control those most emotions. Yeah. So do you believe is that something that people have to experience, or you can you can figure that out without even going through that? I mean, that's why we have books, right? That's why we have books. <laughs> no, you listen to podcasts like this, and you learn yeah. from other people's, people's experiences. Yeah. Right? Go seek mentorship, and then they'll let you know, you know, how to handle yourself in those situations. 100. percent Um, I think now. I do give some grace to the people in 2017 because that was like the first bust, right? the, the first, first boom. <laughs> like we didn't know what to expect, right? Like we didn't even know if crypto was going to last. Man, we didn't know right. if it was a scam, nothing, right? So I could understand the panic then. But now you have no excuse. Yeah. Now you have no excuse, right? So just hang on and then you'll be all right. What is your, what is your, if you had three money lessons or three money principles, yeah. what are they? Man, I think um, number one, like we mentioned earlier, man, I'd say, um, I say don't don't ever don't, don't don't let money sit in your account like it's not something to to, to let, put money to work. When you when you say because some people will hear that and they'll be like, wait, so I got ten thousand in my account right yeah. now just sitting. It's my savings. Yeah. I shouldn't let that sit. Nah, don't let that sit. Go put that money to work. At the end of the day, money is meant to work for you, not you working for money, right? Um, mm. What what does what uh, Warren Buffett say? Like if you don't find a way to if you if you don't find a way to make uh, to make money in your sleep, you'll work you'll until work, you die. You'll work until you die. Right. So like. Go put that money to work, right? At the end of the day, invest in something. Even if you're not creative not enough to come up with a business, put that in some options or dividend paying stocks or something safe, right? But at least it's giving you a return on your investment, right? Mm -hmm. I'll say that's number one as far as money goes. Um, number two is like we spoke about earlier too, right? Um, just not not drifting. You, you, at the end of the day, just just... Don't fall for shiny object syndrome and then just stick to one thing. Invest in one thing, stick to it. Don't, don't go with the craze, right? That's how you lose your money in business. I've always found that the businesses that have done the best for me are the ones that are not based on all the shiny stuff we're seeing online these days, right? I, I just stick to certain niches <laughs> that I know are tried and true. And that's what has always worked for me. Um, and, and also believing that, bro, hard work pays. Like people don't want these days, everybody wants everything passive. Hands yeah, off. It's, <laughs> it's this whole passive income mentality where people want to be working on a beach. They want to be nomads. They want to work on their laptop. They're selling them this dream. You, I fire, I fire any of my staff that I see on social media that they're working from a beach or something. Really? I, oh yeah. I just fired one recently because, um, when she came to me, she was hungry. She was doing an amazing job. Um, and then all of a sudden I see on her social media post, she's like, a, she was hiring, she's an executive assistant. And then she was hiring another executive assistant to do her, her work job. for her. Meanwhile, on her social media page, she's on the beach every freaking day. Like, no, don't do that. Like, people don't want to work anymore. Like, you have to have a work ethic. That's how you. That's how you build no, wealth. Facts. That's how you make money. So, a lot of people, um, they just want to be. They want passive. They don't want to touch it. I had somebody reach out to me the other day, like, "Hey, Mike, if I gave you this two thousand dollars, would you start the business for oh, me and run man, it for me? Get out of here! Like, you want me to come run this? Like, what the heck? Like, nobody wants to work for money anymore. Like, I, you, I, you have to at some point. You got, you got to start the business, get it working, get it up to the point where now the money can work for you. Yeah, it doesn't just happen overnight. So I, I think, yeah, you, you do those three things. I think you'd be fine, man. Yeah. And, and, and the thing about that, you so right, bro. The thing about that is um, it, on social media, it looks like everybody's working. Yeah. But in real life, it's really not that much competition, which if you if you have work ethic, yeah. it's so easy in these times because, like you said, most people are really not trying to work for real. They're not real. trying to work anymore. Yeah, bro. they're not. Like everybody, like, and then let's talk about this too, right? Like I, there's this whole debate about brick and mortar versus click and order. Yeah. Everybody wants to go digital. Yep. Like they knock in brick and mortar now. Nobody wants to set up a brick and mortar anymore. And then I ask you, if you don't, who's going to who's gonna build bridges? Who's going to build roads? Who's going to have, how do we have restaurants and things like that at the end of the day? We can't all be online. We can't all be nomads. You know, you, you, you climbing a mountain somewhere or you're in a beach in some foreign country working on the, off the beach. We can't all do that. People have to be in the real world. Like, you you know, yeah. so um, don't don't knock 
brick and mortar. There's still lots of good opportunities in that. You can still make money and thrive in that too, right? So yeah, you're you right. Know, you're yeah. right. And you got to work. You got to put some sweat equity. Sweat equity is sweat everything. Sweat equity is, is key. <laughs> I seen uh, Mark Cuban talk about that in an interview a while back. He talked about like, that's the most important thing in the business. Yeah. That sweat equity. hundred uh, percent. How do you value it if you mm -hmm. hardly did put in any work? If it's just passive from day one, you never did. Like, look at all the people that jumped into the Walmart and Amazon automation stores um, three, four years ago during yeah. COVID. Where they at now? 90% of them are bankrupt because they paid all these gurus $30,000, $50,000 to run the stores for them. The you store. don't understand the business. You don't know nothing. You don't know who's running it. <laughs> you just paid some money to some random guru for some online passive income scheme. And then now they broke. Now they're crying. And guess what? Walmart canceled almost all those stores. Like, they did. <laughs> almost immediately. They you did. Know? So, yeah, you just got to be careful with things like that. Uh, you're right. And I, and I love the statement about the uh, the bank account stuff, too. Because yeah. me, not, now, I, I keep my money in Ohio savings accounts. There you go. So, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Because you keep your money in the bank. It really is it's not doing anything. It ain't doing nothing for you. But you're just looking at it for comfort or whatever. And that's all it is. is. That, yeah. that comfort. We seek that comfort, right? Mm -hmm. We seek that security. It's that fear of loss of losing money and being broke. <laughs> In outwitting the devil, right? They asked the devil, what are the 10 biggest fears? Number one was um, fear of poverty. Yep. And then the final one is fear of death. Right? Those are two main things that people fear, right? And um, I just think, you know, don't, don't let that make you lax. Don't make that make you too comfortable. And then you lose your edge. Yes. That, that dog, you got to feed. Grant Cardone talks about feeding that beast. You have to. There's a beast inside of you. And mm -hmm. if you let that beast go dormant, you know, um, yeah, it's hard to wake it up. It's hard to wake it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to, I keep myself on that edge. I'm constantly, Wanting to push myself more, more. How do we keep growing? How do we keep growing? So that way I keep feeding that beast. Mm. And this, this, uh, this is a final question I got for you. So yeah. somebody watching, right? And they want to, they want to get into car rentals. Yeah. They think about doing it where there's exotic economy, luxury, no matter what it is. Yeah. But they like, I don't know where the hell to start. I feel like I ain't got the money to start. Yeah. What would you say to them? Uh, so if you, if you don't know, so two questions there. So if you don't, if you don't have the means to start, I would say partner with somebody that does have the means. Right. Uh, partner with somebody. If there's nobody to partner with to start, I would say go work your nine to five. Keep working till you save up a little bit of money. Right. Or financial literacy is 2024. Y'all, there's no excuse why your credit should be less than a 600 right now, or less than a 680. Go fix your credit. Credit repair actually does work. Fix your credit. Get it to where you can walk into a bank and go get a, a personal credit card, a business credit card. Go get an LLC. Get a business credit card. Ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. That's enough to start this business. 15,000 can get you three economy cars. Put those cars to work. Those cars are cash flowing you at least net profit, a thousand to $1,500 a month. That's almost $5,000 mm -hmm. right there off the rip off of a $15,000 credit card. You're cash flowing almost $5,000 a month. You use that money in three months. You could pay off the credit card. Now you have those cars free and clear, right? So I would say do that. Um, now, if you're in a situation where you already have money, you're good to right. go, then 100%, I would say seek information so you know how to do it the right way. You have the right risk management in place and then 100% go do it. Simple as that. Simple go, as that. Just it's, go it's, do it's, it. not, it's not that complicated to get into the business. You just need to make sure that you have proper guidance, do it the right way. Guidance is everything. 100%, yeah. Mentorship is key, bro. Like, yeah. Um, I've used that to really collapse time for me. Mentorship, reading books. Go to YouTube. I give a lot of free game on my YouTube channel. Go watch that. And then what's the channel? Oh, so yeah, at Mike Mike underscore the businessman mm -hmm. on YouTube, uh, Instagram at Mike underscore the businessman. And guys, also if you guys text 469-423-5679, I'll give you guys a free ebook on how to get started in the car rental business. You led me straight too, because I was gonna ask you for the people that's listening or watching that wanna talk to you about mentorship because yeah. you've been in the industry, been through the ups and downs and all yeah. that stuff that you could help collapse time for them. Mm -hmm. I was going to uh, tell you to plug it, 100%. build contact and all that info. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, just hit me up on Instagram, Mike underscore the businessman, or like I said, text 469-423-5679. I'll give you guys a free ebook, teach you guys everything you need to know to get started in the car the business. Yeah. Hey man, y'all, y'all heard him, man. He, he dropped a lot of gems, a lot of value. This was, a, um, even for me, this was a dope conversation. Appreciate and, it, my man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned a lot from this conversation and, uh, uh, what's your Instagram and social medias again so they could just so they know for sure whether to get yeah, in touch 100%. with you. So Mike underscore the businessman on Instagram and Mike underscore the businessman on YouTube. On YouTube. So y'all type in with Mike. Y'all see what's going on. He got a lot of dope things. He's killing it in the business. And as for me, I'm Xavier Miller. Y'all can find me on all platforms and you can follow the Millionaire Mindsets podcast. That's everywhere. That's YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We are everywhere. And that's all I got for y'all on this episode of the Millionaire Mindsets podcast. See you guys next episode. Peace.